welcome to Mega Theatre Builder World. This is an Agramunda scenery build. This is part two of the Sump Seawall Scratch build. Made quite a lot of progress since last time uh, because last time, if you remember, I hadn't actually done anything really to this second scenery piece. This build is different to everything I've done so far because everything I've done so far has been built on one foot squares, usually more tallest squares like this. Uh, this build is four foot by one foot all in one go because I'm making a large chunk of the seawall uh, that goes around the outside of Pier Town, my settlement in the underhive on the shores of the Sump Sea. So this build then is mostly a build with XPS foam, uh, foam core and other traditional modeling materials. I'm using some uh, 40k and necromunda scenery elements to kind of uh, give it that extra grim dark necromunda feel uh, so there might just be a minor amount of digging through the cack in this video i have already added some stuff to the seawall so come over here and check out what i've done so far here we are now you can see all of the seawall i've produced so far remember there's going to be two more foot square sections that go behind this which will make uh, a, a harbour in there so this is the the way in way through this is the the piece that i produced uh, on the first video this is the one over here that I hadn't done anything with at all as you can see I still need to trim the tissue paper around the edges to gonna make up the water um, and I'm adding details now to the whole thing I've got to trim some bits down over here I've got to add rubble and clot and various other bits and pieces but the major structural part of this build is now complete and I'm really quite pleased with it the idea of course with this scenery is that it's it, it still remains fairly modular one of the things that I can do at the moment is if nothing else I can slide the two boards change them round they're designed to go flush against each other like that or they will do when I trim off all this extra paper and I've got enough space on a the table there we go so that now presents quite a large seawall structure um, with water or sump going around the outside um, and I've also got the option to turn them and have them back to back as well again that works quite nicely um, and now it becomes a great big uh, peninsula jutting out into the sump sea which is pretty neat so that gives me definitely gives me options for gaming um, and what I'm definitely going to do in the future is get a couple more two foot by one foot sump water sections that I can use as well to give me more water options so I'm pretty pleased with this all around it's pretty good but I'm now going to get on with the finishing it off and the modeling side of things uh, so I can get all this done this week everything is uh, sealed with uh, Mod Podge and I'm a bit miffed about a couple of things I, I was lax in exactly how I stuck down a couple of bits on that it's not as square as I'd like it to be but you know hey this is thousands and thousands of years old and these look old and knackered and worn. So from that point of view, I've got to get over my own OCDs. The first job I'm going to do then is I'm going to trim off all this excess tissue paper. And then we're going to have a look at adding um, a couple of Necromunda scenery element details to this um, to uh, uh, help give it the right feel for the game. Just in case any of you were worried, and I know some of you were, Look, I found your Bickard Sawlock, bless him. So he will be featuring probably later in this video. Just to keep you up to date with my video habits in the workshop, this build is being brought to you by the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, the extended version. Uh, we're already up to the point where Frodo has been stabbed by the Nazgul and he's now on his way to Rivendell. I'm watching these because I'm going to take a break from Necromunda over Christmas because I've got a load of Middle Earth stuff that I want to get on with as well. So uh, there'll be a, a change of directions towards the end of December. I need to build some stuff for Lord of the Rings too. Right, so like the last video, the first thing I want to do is take a scalpel to the edge of my water to this tissue paper and I'm just going to cut all the way along here so it's nice and flush my podge done a great job with that so that's really cool this is going to give me an interesting texture I hope these blends because the colors at the minute of course are pretty obvious when it's all painted you shouldn't be able to see that too much and I'm going to get this nice kind of murky right wavy effect on here more interesting than just a flat surface which is what I didn't want so um, we'll see what that looks like when it's sprayed. Okay, so last time I added a few elements to 
Necro Munda 40k this up a little bit and I've decided to add a few more because I have on the, the other um, sump section. This is the original bit. I haven't really been digging through the cack for these because these are just lying around with all the other bits. Didn't have to look very hard at all. I've got lots of these um, Zone Mortalis square sections because when I've doubled them up, I haven't tended to use the uh, uh, the bit on the top there to turn it around and the rest of it. So I've got lots of these. They're, they're quite funky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit a couple of these into a couple of these uh, um, bits of wall like that, because then that way they're going to cut that out and sink that in. Um, and that will give me some definitely some uh, Necrom under 40k kind of feel, a bit more of a feel to this. Um, so that's what we're going to do. All I'm going to do then is I'm going to use, uh, try and centre that as much as I can. I'm only doing this by eye again. And I'm just going to take a pencil and draw roughly around the outside of the shape. I'm then going to cut into this XPS foam. And I have to reveal what's behind, which is more XPS foam, which I'll also have to cut into to get this scenery piece sit flush so there we go there's the you just about see the zoom in there yeah we can we can see the lines of drawn in and now i'm going to cut them out it's quite cool actually because you know i did this pretty much by hand just measuring that and sticking out on there it's done quite well there so i'm going to cut into the green foam with my scalpel and i know there's thicker grey XPS foam behind this as well so I'm going to have to cut oops, some of that away too cut across there down the angle across the top the hole is likely to be a little bit bigger than the actual plastic component right let's dig this out again Ta -da, ta -da. Now at the minute it sticks out, so I'm going to have to cut into that grey foam, you can see the grey foam just in here, so I'm going to have to cut some of that away as well, which is going to be a bit of a fiddle, I won't bother videoing that, you'll just look see, be able to see the pretty result at the end of it, but that's going to look quite neat I think on the end there, and then I'm going to do that right down here on this end as well over here. Okay here we go, so I've got one of these tops in there that's gluing in and another one in over this side now, i'm quite pleased with those they sat in quite nicely a bit more flush than the ones i did on the other model as it goes um now i'm gonna add some rubble and clart I might see if i can find a few more bits of junk but i don't want to have too much junk on this because i'm going to rely on scatter terrain mostly i think um but i do need to sand up and rubble up both of these boards uh that helps to hide some of the the naffa bits that I've cut or left or whatever else, and that will also mean that um, you know, that will help blend this in with all the other boards too. Right. So another thing I haven't had to go cack digging for because I just came up with these this week or chucking some stuff out is this little thing. This it's a very handy ladder from an IKEA set of shelves. I put one on the other bit of scenery. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this into this bit of seawall over here. I'm going to have that there so it will be possible to use it to get up onto the sump wall from a, um, a vessel that comes alongside kind of thing. So it'll be quite handy. And obviously there it will help characters get up and down too. So uh, I've decided it's going to go in roughly here. Uh, and actually all I'm going to do for the moment is press that into the XPS foam if I can. Um, that's what it's going in. I might even have it sticking out like that, as opposed to it being completely flush. And that way there, um, that just needs it sticking on. I'm going to stick that on, I think, because this is sealed on the outside with super glue. Let's try that. Right, we're at a stage now where I need to add some gravel and grit and general weather into this thing. So um, this is the second board. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, I'm using what's left of me, black glassy grit. I've got an old school 
workshop basing kit um, and I've got my big box over there of coral sand and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use Mod Podge PVA I'm going to glue in here I'm going to put rubble and cack in different places make the place look a little bit more uneven um, seal up some of the things that I've cut out like that bit there generally just take the kind of like neat kind of edge off everything we've got here it's not like the uh, under hivers that ever gets the cleaners in is it so from that point of view he just piles up this detritus help me join up some of the gaps in between some of these plates and things it's another one of those bits that will look miles better when it's painted as soon as it gets sprayed yeah, everything starts to blend together and work really well so I'm, you know I'm, i don't have a plan right now i'm literally just going along seals and gaps where i want sand to fall i'm going over big areas that way there the whole place will just look dirty knackered run down just like well they're pretty much everywhere in the underhive certainly out here this is Larger bits first. This is cacking places. Bigger bits actually force into place. On a couple of these stairs. leave this to dry for a little while before I shake any of this off actually so they right all right so on the sanding tray now just to collect any spare sand because I'm literally taking handfuls and piling that on When it's dry, I will probably go over it all again with Mod Podge to seal it, but actually, most of the time, shouldn't need it, it will just soak into the PVA. There's a pin there, look. Like that. Right, spraying booth, out in the spraying booth and get in the garage. Bit cold for spraying today, but needs must. Now I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This is one of my favourite parts of model making because this is where all those component parts get blended by the primer, and it all looks like one model. We're using. Halford's matte black today as our base coat got two of these to paint so uh, I'm not going to show you any more of this blimey you've seen spraying before look but on the water surface all those different colours of tissue papers just go away okay while I wait for the paint to dry the spray paint on my, my two bits of sump wall. I'm now thinking about the uh, lighthouse element. This uh, is what I'm currently thinking about using as the lighthouse. This is the fabulous little watchtower from the Zomortalis Gang Stronghold. No less. Here we go. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do for the minute is I'm just going to stick this together. Uh, so this is not going to be a particularly exciting part of the video. It's going to be me sticking together a regular plastic kit. But, you know, I don't normally do that. Um, I am definitely going to search for some kind of lighting device that I can put on the top of this. 
but I don't know what I'm going to use yet. I'm going to have to search out the right thing. So I'm going to see how we go. Um, but this is such a cool little bit of gear that, it, you know, it cries out to be used. I am going to be using it uh keeping it detachable it's not going to be permanently attached to the model more than anything else because the model is going to be a pain in the neck to store as it is without a thing that's going to be a kind of like a getting on for a foot tall anyway i have had one idea which is actually using this i can't remember where i've got this from now this but this is a, a speaker of one kind or another and actually mounting this on the tower as part of a flood warning system um but uh, i'll have to see how we go with that i need to be able to 40k that up a little bit at the moment so at the moment it's a bit um yeah very plastic but quite cool speaker out of something that would uh make quite a good whaley kind of thing um i'll have to consider that all right so i've now just taken that apart check it out this is the speaker that is inside it and now i've got this hub i'm now actually if nothing else thinking about how i could turn this into a light house light searchlight type thing on the top of the tower I'll have to think more along the lines of that. If nothing else, I could maybe put uh, an LED holder in there with an LED in it. Um, and then maybe some mirrors or something. Torch fittings is what I need. And you'd be able to go and take a torch apart to fit in there. That would be cool. I wonder. Mm. Home base, here I come. Knackered old torches is what I need. This is such a cool model. The whole outpost set is fantastic. You can see that I haven't used much of it yet. Look, uh, most of it is still on the sprue. But just putting this bit of gear together is just shows how versatile the model this is. I haven't stuck this on here, but there's so many possibilities for this tower. I've really got to hand it to the, the guys at Workshop who have designed this. It's, it's a cracking piece of, of design. Um... This is going to make a very cool lighthouse. It's definitely going to go all the way up there. That, I think that's going to look excellent on the uh, end of my, my uh, sump wall. Definitely going to have to come up with a way of turning that into the light itself. I think that'll be pretty neat. Uh, I'm going to take it off this mounting here. See if I can mount it on something else. This is a really cool bit of gear. Um, if you haven't bought the uh stronghold because you think oh it's not really for me uh, i really recommend you go out and get a get one i'm gonna have to get another one because i'm gonna want at least one more of these towers they're actually brilliant um and i haven't even finished putting it together yet but yeah they're good all right so i didn't think i was gonna be doing much from a scratch building point of view but this lighthouse bit has got me intrigued so i've taken the four corners <laughs> oh I've taken the four corners. No, you, as you can see, I haven't stuck these together. I am dry fitting, as I tend to say, uh, from the base of the fortress walls. This is about to become a really expensive model, but um, taking the four corners from the base of the, the fortress walls like that, which is really neat. I've taken that speaker uh, assembly that I showed you earlier, cut off the wings of it, and its base. Now, its base now, I'm hoping it's going to fit just drop in there which is neat because i'm going to be able to just rotate that spin that round on the spot um and then i'm probably going to use one of these white led candle bodies tea lights that you've seen me use before and i'm probably going to mount this on top like that somehow i've got a 40k it necromundary up yet and it's got to have gubbins put on it and obviously put have a light system put in it too but I'm starting to get something that looks more like a lighthouse and less like that watchtower. Which it wasn't necessarily my intention because my intention was to keep the watchtower as a watchtower. But then this bit could stay separate and I could just pop that on the top. And then I've got a multi-purpose kind of like piece of scenery. Um, I think it's going to need some kind of platform. Now the back here next is a set of stairs for maintenance kind of purposes. See what I can come up with for that. Right, that's... right. Okay, so ridiculously pleased with myself right now. This is the uh, the lighthouse structure that we've been looking at, and um, this was that light that speaker 
I've now taken apart. I went and did all sorts of things. I went into town. I went looking for crap torches in cheap shops and things. Nobody does crap torches anymore. You know, the two AA battery, the AA, yeah, the two AA battery slider torch with a little silver reflector in it because everybody makes LED torches. And as I was driving home, I thought, mm -hmm, I have 3D printers. Surely somebody has got light for lighthouse stuff. And I found myself a parabolic reflector, which I printed and I painted. And here it is, stuck on now, the back of this. And I'm jury, I've jury rigged so far, just the back of it with a three volt uh, button battery holder. Coin battery, I think they're called, rather than button batteries. Now I'm gonna take just an LED, white LED, Stick that in, check it out. Now, that's, I mean, that's just a glowing LED, but stick it into me parabolic lighthouse. And I'm going to come up with a mechanism for that to sit on the top. That's pretty cool. Gee, I'm going to have something like this for it to sit on. There you go in the daylight but let's just go turn the lights off check this out that actually works really well i'm kind of pleasing myself it's going to do for the meantime while i work out how i could even make it rotate that would be even cooler but for the moment it works very well as a spotlight come lighthouse well pleased there you go. obviously what it now needs is it now needs to be 40 k up a bit because at the minute it's far too smooth and not clunky or grim darky enough so i need to find some cack to go on the outside of it so time to go digging through the cack just a little bit of cack is required for something to make this into a proper necromunda uh, spotlight come lighthouse fitting i don't know what i'm looking for but i'm going to go and have a look and see what i can find this is one cuck box well, that is. and i reckon I'm, i shouldn't have too much difficulty finding what i'm looking for in fact wow well, hang on in fact, i think i've already found the main body of what i want Obviously, some of this isn't cack at all. It's still stuff on spruce. But in here, that is an old... Well, it's a pair of wheels from a, an original wall wagon. That mounted underneath. Oh, let's have a look. Where's my desk? There it is now. If I stick him on top of one of those, that would work really well. Especially if I could find some things to plug up those gaps. That'll look quite cool, even if it's a computer terminal or something else. Splendid. Not too difficult. Found something a lot quicker than I thought I was going to. Oh, digging through the cack comes up trumps once again. Need stuff to go on the back, mind you, and actually all around on the light fitting too. That will be quite cool. Okay, this is how far I've got then. I've, I've committed to this now. I've stuck these corner sections together and I've taken a tile, what's that, a, a platform tile and stuck that on, I've trimmed off the edges of that and stuck it on. I found myself, not that it wants to stick because this old plastic of this wall wagon wheel is so ancient that actually melting the plastic is pretty tricky, so it's indestructible now. But I've found myself a computer terminal fill out that one gap i'm going to have that there like that and this computer terminal is going to sit in this gap here so this now is on the back so that's starting to look a bit more 40k this is still really very smooth i've got to find something to do with this because this is still looking far too modern molded plastic but that's going to sit on the top like that 
It's starting to look more and more like a thing than it's supposed to. Yeah, quite pleased with this. Here then is the solution from a wheel. Um, that's just one of those hatch covers. Look, it's got the necromandiri skull on it. That's going to sit. Whoops, there goes the light on top of that. That was sitting there neatly, which means I could take that off whenever I like. Uh, we could turn it around in any direction I like, but it will sit and balance quite nicely. So I'm not going to stick that to that, but I am going to stick this on here. Cool. So here we are. Now, there's the top of my lighthouse. These corner bits are not stuck onto this part here. The war wagon wheel is, but the lighthouse light itself isn't. So I can twist and turn that in any direction I like. I've added just a few bits on the outside to make it less smooth and a bit more clunky and a bit kind of rivety and that kind of thing. We've got some controls on the top um, and on the reverse take that off to turn this around a moment but there we go on the reverse of the lighthouse there we've got a control unit if anybody ever gets up that high and there are pipes and bits and pieces too um plus that vent on the back yeah, it actually looks yeah it's pretty cool i reckon when that's all painted up and all part of this tower that's gonna look quite neat Okay, this is where I've got to so far. <clears throat> four foot of some wall now. Well, not four complete feet, because there's a inlet there, it's about eight inches wide, but that's what it's looking like. The weathering's all right. I'm not a huge fan of it. it actually does work. It needs more weathering, and it needs the lighthouse doing now. Looks pretty neat that way around. It goes together quite nicely there. And it even works like that. So uh, I'm quite pleased. I didn't mean those stairwells to line up quite so well as that, actually, but they've done quite a good job. Okay, so here is the light from the lighthouse. We painted the silver bit in the parabolic dish. That will twist battery power and bits and pieces got to paint the tower now going to keep this bit separate so I can take it off and use the watchtower as a watchtower quite pleased with that solution that's the, the light itself, you could probably make a lid of this out of a shaving can or something similar uh, 3D printed parabolic reflector and then just cack from the cack box works really well uh, looking forward to putting this on the model So that's the end of the build of the sump wall, or well, the first part of the sump wall anyway, four feet of it in fact, well it chooses about three feet of sump wall and it's about of, uh, eight, ten inches of sump. I've got two more sections to go in behind it um, and they're probably going to get built pretty soon. Um, on the whole I'm really pleased with this as a model, um, the XPS foam was quite nice to work with. It meant I could do large areas relatively cheaply um, and I think I've managed to keep the aesthetic and make it blend with all the other scenery that I've produced so far as well. You can check that bit out for yourself in a moment. Let's have a closer look at what we've got. So this is it. I'm actually very pleased with it. I've, there are a couple of caveats I need to add to this. I'm still working on weathering. I like the paint job on this. I think it works at a distance. Um, it doesn't necessarily stand up to really, really close inspection. I've gone for more of a theatrical kind of look. So the, the paintwork is big and bold, but it works really well. It's a great big piece of scenery, to be quite honest. So it needs big and bold scene uh, painting. The lighthouse, I'm um, quite happy with. I'd love to work out a way of making the actual light revolve, rotate. I'll have to look into motors and bits and pieces or some kind of cunning thing there. But as a... A separate piece that I could use anywhere on the table it works really well um, 
there's enough of a gap to get large vehicles through in here waterborne vehicles is going to be a um marina kind of harbory bit back there which would be quite cool uh, and i'm really pleased with the sump water effect which was done with the tissue paper it's a bit rough and ready but it works really well and same with the coloring but you've got this nice texture it's not all just smooth calm as a mill pond uh which i'm quite pleased about i'm going to resin seal it um to make it harder uh and make it a tougher piece of scenery all round. um because uh, the gloss comes for at the moment from gloss mod podge which is all right apart from the fact that it's a wet day today and i had to take this from inside the house to back out to the workshop and i have to carry it upside down because if water gets on the pva like that it will reactivate it which is a bit of a pain in the neck so with a resin seal on it that will make it just more hard wearing i'm quite happy with the blend of uh 40k necromunda scene elements into the foam i think that helps to give it that credibility that it's necromunda or 40k scenery um without having to spend loads and i'm actually using up spare bits i've got loads of these uh pieces so actually using a few of those is quite cool so in general i'm really pleased with this as a model i've got like i said two more sump sections to do and i'm definitely going to have to make some sump sections to come out here because this, like any other decent modelling project, has already uh, generated a whole bunch of, of new ideas um, for what I've already got planned and what I want to make in the future. So what was going to be a four foot by four foot board is probably not now going to be four foot by four foot. It's going to get bigger. This then now is Pier Town. This is 10 of 16 tiles. Not the configuration I've got in mind because down behind this area here where the water goes in there'll be two more those two sections there so the guns and ammo shop and cindy's chop shop we're going not going to be there because that's going to be more water and sump sea wall but this is just to show you what it looks like at this stage and what it looks like at this stage is pretty crowded chocker block really pleased with how this is coming on this is accidental in fact this lines up almost completely with this but that's cool back over the sump wall there's the bar crocs i am going to have to make another bar called tot the club up to the sump stack at the back Rather pleased with this. And so I think the paint job is pretty simple. And my weathering has got to improve. But that is basically a black undercoat with a bronze and a metallic silver kind of sprays on it. Then a Mornfang brown dry brush. And then lead belcher. And then uh, Zandri dust on the rubbly clotty bits and then riser rust and typhus and oh no can't remember some green nurgly stuff but actually it works quite well it's quite effective i want a table i can play on i want a table that other people can look at and go yeah i can make that um so hopefully you are hopefully you're looking at this and going yeah i can make that six tiles to go two more making together hopefully before christmas and now i'm gonna hit some lord of the rings all right these are the three bits of the lighthouse then i'm really pleased with this i made it part of anything else so i can keep the watchtower a separate thing remember it's made to go up here but I'm not attaching that permanently because I want to, it's going to be a pain in the ass to store. So the fact it's not on there permanently is good. Then this is the mount for the light. Remember, this is made from four corner sections from the 
fortress set. So a pretty expensive bit of gear, uh, but good and solid. And then the lamp itself, which includes a 3D printed parabolic reflector here, and a 3D printed coin cell holder inside as well, and then the rest is mainly cack. But you can see, just even with the lights on, how good that light from the lighthouse actually is. I'd love to come up with a way of actually putting it on a motor so it turned around by itself, but that's pretty cool. And if I turn the lights off, it's even better. So I really, really, really pleased with that. Very, very effective. It also means that I can use this, I can make a weapon mount to go on top of that. That could have, my friend Bob suggested that as it's going to be a weapon to guard the piers of Pier Town, it should be the Piers Moor gun because he makes terrible jokes. But I can have a low lying spotlight. Uh, that also works really well and that means I can use a tower elsewhere. And cool. So, these are the next two tiles I'd like to build. These are going to be one foot by one foot. You can see these are the two tiles um, here that I've made. There they are. And I now need to make the two that are going to go back in there. And if I make those two, that will then be um, 12 foot. Uh, I could do a three foot by four foot table quite nicely with sump and all that kind of thing. I might not put this jetty in here that I've got originally planned because it might not give enough space in this area back here. Although I might make a jetty that's removable because then I could use it out on the front of the, the sump wall as well. So we'll have to see what happens there. Um, but those I'm going to definitely aim for um, next. And then I've got some new plans. So that's 10 feet of 16 completed for my Necromunda table. I'm aiming originally for a four foot by four foot Necromunda board. And by the looks of things, the way uh, the current COVID crisis is still occurring and going on and our rates are rising again in the UK, uh, I almost certainly am going to get the whole board completed before I get to actually play with another human being from outside my family which is good because I haven't actually got any gangs painted yet um, but from that point of view there's still plenty to build the other problem is of course is the fact that this lot has thrown up a whole bunch of new ideas building the sump wall and the next two pieces has already changed my mind about what else I'd like to do if you've been watching all of these videos you might remember this very vague one foot tile that I'd got planned um, which is going to be the enforcer's enclosure based around this piece of Ikea lighting, this brushed steel Ikea table lamp. And it was going to be on a foot square in Pier Town. But now, due to all of this and some other cool ideas, I've decided that I'm going to have them as sump enforcers and their compound is going to be out on the water. Well, water's a vague, loose term, sump. It's probably better they're going to be out here rather than in town and they'll have to get backwards and forwards by a variety of vehicles including a conversion i'm going to do on this scorpius disintegrator which i picked up at games workshop in colchester yesterday which is quite cool um so that's kind of like sneak peeks for 2021 i'm going to try and get these two sections of sump built sump wall built by christmas You'll have to see. You might have a jolly festive Christmas Eve video to watch at this rate. I'm going to do them both together again like I've done these sections. Because when you're building one, you're building, you're building both. Then I'm going to take a break for a while and make some Lord of the Rings scenery. Um, I've been threatening to do that for months now. And I really fancy having a go at doing that too. I'm going to be using more XPS phone for that. So if you're into the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game, then make sure you're watching that as well. Um, if you want to see how the rest of the sump wall turns out, then make sure you subscribe to Magrathea Build All Worlds. In fact, if you got this far into the video, you're probably already a subscriber. But if you're not, and this is the first time you've watched one of my videos, then go back and watch all the others. I would subscribe first, but then go back and watch all the others. You've missed 10 feet, 10 square feet of Necromunda Build, which is quite a lot of video. 
please do leave comments down below i love to read what you suggest i'm going to need more ideas for what i'm going to put on this one foot square tile that is now not going to be the enforcers compound i've had a couple of cracking ideas from a couple of videos already both of which i really really like i'm not going to share those with you now you'll have to go back and read the comments on my previous videos um but otherwise if i don't see you before i'm aiming for this to be uh, a, a pre-Christmas release the next one maybe you never know even a, a you can get yourself a beer out or a, a, a coffee or whatever is your poison on Christmas Eve and watch a festive ho 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 uh, Magrathea build a world building a sump wall for Necromunda and have a sneak off and have half an hour to yourself um, apart from that thanks very much for watching your, my videos I'm amazed there are so many people out there who still want to tune in um, do come and find me over on my Facebook page at Magrathia Models. There you can find out how you can go about getting yourself a Digging Through the Cack t-shirt. And uh, I'd love to see you here, back here next time with another build from Magrathia Builder of Worlds. Thanks for watching.